And now, another timely and powerful message from Pastor Emmanuel Williams and Imitators of God Ministries, Colossal Vivacious Church in Tallahassee. I'm here to preach this morning on the topic entitled, Preaching Jesus Will Do It. Preaching Jesus Will Do It. We're breaking right into Acts chapter 8 verse 5. That's where we stopped last week. Chapter 8 verse 5. And I'm going to read verse 5 to verse 8. And let's see how much we can cover. 45 minutes. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are told here in verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. That's where I got my sermon topic. Preaching Jesus will do it. What did, G- what did Philip preach? Christ. He didn't preach about himself. I, 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 me, 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 me. Who cares about that? That doesn't change anybody. And as a result of preaching Christ, you, 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 you see these days, these COVID days, you got to be frank. These are days we cannot mess around and play the devil done. Uh, uh, um, possess Putin and he's trying to take over country. You get what I'm saying? Th- these days we have to be, we have to get the word of God and preach what we see was preached in the Bible and was effective. Are you getting what I'm saying? We, let's look at what happened when Philip preached Jesus Christ. Not himself or what God did for him. Jesus Christ. Oh, I wish the church would start preaching Jesus today. You know, uh, this, well, let me move on here. You, sometimes you come with your plan and you hear God, amen, but can we finish let me finish with the text it says here philip preached christ unto them and the people see what happened when he preached christ the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which philip spake hearing the word of god and seeing the miracles which he did the holy ghost got involved because philip was preaching whom jesus christ (laughs) <laughs> oh and notice what happened the miracles he experienced are detailed for us in verse 7 for unclean spirits demons crying with a loud voice shrieking <laughs> came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies. And that were lame. Were what? Healed. Oh, gl- That did not happen in church. The action is not in church. Saints. Let me say it in English. The action is not in church. Are you getting what I'm saying? The ch- are, you getting what I'm, are you getting what I'm saying brother? You go out without the walls. Go to where your pulpit is. Our pulpit is out there. That's okay. You don't have to say amen. That's all right. No, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's, that's all right. But I'm guarantee you, you go out there and start laying on laying hands and see what will happen. The Holy Ghost will authenticate and approve what you're doing. That's what he will do. He'll say, finally, they are, they are fulfilling Acts 1.8. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, all of Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. I'm talking too fast. And when he sees you falling in line and embracing Acts 1 8, he's going to authenticate and approve what you do. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's time we go out there. And, and, and the, the devil has no territory. Talk about going into the territory of the devil. He has what the devil has. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's <laughs> and the fullness thereof. Satan has nothing but just a bunch of tricks. Messes with our mind all week. Have us come into church discombobulated like we do not know where we are. The devil is a liar. Wouldn't say nothing to him. The Bible tells us in James chapter 4 verse 7. Resist the devil. And he will flee. Whispering thoughts and we just say. "Mm -hmm, uh, uh." Wouldn't cast down one. The Bible says casting down. Imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself. against. When he tells you about me this week. Say uh uh not pastor. (laughs) You, you, You know that's what he does you know. 
he, he tried to set, set us up against one another. And we come to church thinking of a brother. Pass one another straight. Do not say good morning. The devil is a liar. I'm here to expose his tricks. We need to grow, saints. We need to grow. We come. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm saying, saints? And the Bible says, for unclean spirits, carrying, crying out with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with him, with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame, were healed. And notice what happened. What happened after people got healed, the word came, there was great joy in that city. There was what? Great joy in that city. There was what? Great joy in that city. Great joy. People began to rejoice. Amen. Finally, a smile broke on their faces. You know why? Because the power of the devil was broken over that city. Was what? Broken over that city. And that's what will happen when the power of Satan breaks over your house. Amen. Over your life. A smile will come on your face. You'll be able to love better. Ah, uh, glory be to God. Amen. You'll see brothers and sisters in a different light. Our church's motto is, 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 um, is, uh, glory be to God. Ephesians chapter five, verse one. Ephesians five, verse one. It says, therefore be followers. That word, Ephesians five, verse one. Followers means imitators of God. Therefore be what? Followers. That word followers in the Greek means, that's where the church name comes from. Imitators of God. That is why our church proclamation is the word of God. Love is not, love is not, love is not, love is, love is. We don't have to be perfect to say it. Nobody is perfect. Everybody is going through sanctification. We are all going through that process. And so I'm saying now and then the Bible says in Ephesians 4, 3, we need to endeavor. Endeavor means to, if, can you go to Ephesians 4, 3? Uh, you know, sometimes I get so infuriated. Ephesians, that's Ephesians 4, 3, not 5, 3. It says here, therefore, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Endeavor means to go out of your way. To work with people. Let me move to my sermon. I didn't come to preach that this morning. Yeah. Sometimes we forget. You know. The devil sometimes whispers to us all week. And we get so messed up. We come to church forgetting the word of God. Are you hearing me? The devil has one goal. One goal only. One goal. And that is not to let the seed of God's word penetrate your heart. If it penetrates the soil of your heart. It begins to do what? Germinate. He's in trouble. He knows he's in trouble. So what he does all week. He's trying not to let the seed of God's word. Germinate in your heart. This is how most of us are. And hear me. I want you to use your mind to go there with me. Imagine a desolate piece of land. A land. A desolate piece of land. Like a desert. Alright. Now go over. And imagine a beautiful valley. Lushed, green with trees and fruits. That's how God wants us to be. But the majority of us are like desolate land. Dry and parched. Because God's word has not taken root in our hearts. And so we look dry and parched. Our faces look dry. Let me, let me move on here. Let me, I'm trying. I'm, all week I talk with people. I'm saying what is wrong with you? Have you forgotten that you are Christian? But what's going on? They were rejoicing. For Sorry for taking that rabbit trail. <laughs> Amen. But sometimes, brothers and sisters, it breaks my heart. I'm aching. And I'm asking that to give me a door. Give me an open door so I could bring hope. Amen. Because without us, these people have no hope out there. Let me say that again. If you and I don't go, they have no hope. If Philip did not go, nobody would be healed. 
Let me say that again. If Philip did not go, nobody would be healed. Christ would not be preached. The palsies wouldn't be healed. Demons, unclean demons wouldn't come out of anybody. Uh, until you and I go, they are hopeless. And don't you count yourself out. You got the power of God. You house God. Are you with me? Don't you let the devil trick you and tell you about your past. If he tell you about your past, tell him about his future. Amen. Tell him about his future. If he tells you about, if he said, well, who are you? Who you think you are? Where did you come from? He say, hello, hello here. Hello here. You toothless lion. All you got is a raw. And I know that. I know who I am in Christ. I am the righteousness of God. In Christ, I know where I am seated. Ephesians 2 said, I'm seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. What can I do? Philippians 4.13. I can do all things. So devil, I know your game. I know you are. You are nothing. You only have a bag of tricks. That's all you got. And I'm taking you down in the name of Jesus. Ah, glory be to God. I'm taking down your whispering thoughts. That's how he comes with whispering thoughts. And we don't say anything. We just say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18 verse 20. Death and life lies in the power of the tongue. How many of you believe that? So why are we so quiet? All week thinking of what. The, you take it down. The Bible has to become. For the Bible to work for you and I. It has to become literal. A leader role, are you with me? You got we, we, we got to get serious in these last days. God is ready to God is ready to unleash his power and authenticate us if we go out preaching Jesus. If we go out do what? Preaching Jesus. Like Philip did. Preaching who's Philip? We said Philip was not the apostle Philip. Philip was one of the guys they recruited to be on the pantry committee. Mm, is that right? Just an ordinary brother and sister like you and I. Amen. The Bible says that the Grecian widows began to complain against the Hebrew widows. You see, this is what happened. They had their problems out there and they brought it in the church. Let that sink a bit. Yeah, yeah, the Jews and the Greeks had, had hated one another out in the world. They got saved. Nothing has changed. Yeah, yeah, you have folks coming out wherever they have had people come here from everywhere telling me all kind of stuff. I take it to God, God tell me trash it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Why? Why? Because brothers and sisters, I, 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 God called me and I'm responsible to God. Yes, I take everybody's suggestion, but I took, I take it in a basket and I take it to God. All of them in a basket. You'll be surprised if you come here all week. I have them laid down all in front of here. I write them down and I lay them all in front of here. And I'm walking asking God for wisdom. Are you with me saints? I'm not dummy. The Bible says in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Lord is that safety? Or not? I'm saying the Bible has to become literal saints to us. Literal. It has to be real for it to work. So who was Philip? You know I told you last week. Church folks like comedies. You might only say, we love, oh, we love a committee. I'm on this committee. I'm on that committee. Just bureaucracy. After bureaucracy. How many of you know committees take a long time to do anything? Well, let, let me move on. Some of you disagree with me. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Uh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Acts 6, 5. Let's see. Uh, just... I want to tell you a little bit of Philip. Philip name, Philip him, his name meant fund of horses. His name come out of two words, horses and friend. Fund, just an ordinary guy whose name means fund of horses. In Acts 6 verse 5, they came to the apostles and said, hey, there is a fight in the church. The apostles give, give some advice and Acts 6, 5 says, and what they said pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. And here he is, Philip. Amen? That's Philip. Philip, the one who was on the committee. He remembered Acts 1, 8, that Jesus said, hmm? You shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the world. He remembered what Jesus said. 
Hmm? Now, I, I think I said that last week and somebody asked some questions about witnesses. When Jesus says to you and I, we shall be witnesses. He's not referring to standing at the corner of Appalachia Parkway and Capital Circle South is holding a sign that reads, Turn or burn. Repent or hell. Well, you know, some of us think that's a good thing to do. Let me say that again. When Jesus in Acts 1.8 asks us to be witnesses for him. Mm -hmm, in Tallahassee. In Leon County. In the Big Bend and throughout the state of Florida. He's not asking us to take a, a sign and go stand mm, at the corner of Appalachia Parkway with a sign written on turn or burn. Repent or hell. I had a Hispanic couple who attended here a long time ago and that was what was important to them. He was a Pentecostal like myself. I used to be a Pentecostal. Now I'm saved. And it doesn't matter who is mad. I know about, I grew up Pentecostal. I know about Pentecostals. <laughs> let me, let me, so let me move on here. So he wanted us to, he wanted me to put a sign on me. Mm -hmm, to stand at the corner of the parkway. And capital circle, turn or burn. Repent or hell. I said, sir, I don't think that's the best thing to do. He said, why? I said, because that is not preaching Jesus. <laughs> oh God I give you praise and so he rah, 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 he left I said God bless you I release you hmm? because you got to understand what the true witness is now that doesn't mean we cannot go and knock on doors the Bible tells us to we he was Christ was speaking illustrating the 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 the, the uh, the, the great supper. Mm -hmm, the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said this. He said, because nobody wants to attend, I want you to go in the highways and the, and the hedges. So, and compel them. So, there is a place for that. But brother, a true witness is light in darkness. <laughs> Notice Jesus didn't say go witnessing. No, no. He said be a witness. Where you are, be a witness. Where you are, let your light shine. At the job, let your light shine. Some Christians have lost their testimony at work. Shame on you. Jesus COVID, I hold in back nothing. Where got your pulpit? Where your pulpit is, everybody hates you at work. Something is wrong and it's not them. Maybe you are too spiritual for them. Behaving uppity up. The devil is a liar. Look, look, I know about behaving uppity up. I was a Pentecostal. Okay, in the island, I work at one of the most prestigious banks. And I was uppity up until God took me down to the ground. I know about pride. and I left the island, came here, ended up on the floor of an African. On the homeless on the floor of an African and the devil tell me and the devil whispered to me you think God still loves you I know about that let me move on so so you see now I can I can I'm delivered now oh yeah I'm delivered oh, oh my mind has been renewed yeah yeah my mind has been renewed <laughs> oh yes God is a good God Oh, I thank God for, I thank God for every issue I went through. It made me better. <laughs> Paul said his strength is made perfect in my weakness. Don't you let the devil fool you and let you think that because you break down, something is wrong with you. Isn't the breaking down, you get power. <laughs> oh, don't let him fool you. That's when God's strength is made perfect. In your weakness. If you can say praise the Lord. When they take your house. That's power. <laughs> oh glory be to Jesus. Oh, if you can say like Job. Blessed be the name. You see that's when we break down. And we lose the opportunity to amass power. Because we don't understand how the spiritual laws work. You see.
Yeah, and I can smell pride because I was proud. I can smell it anywhere, anywhere I see it. <laughs> I remembered, I remembered God said to me, until you change, you'll go nowhere. You'll go nowhere. He said, how long? I <laughs> let me move, let me move on. I'm here to preach Christ, amen. <laughs> so, Philip remembered what Jesus said to him. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Going to start in Samaria. Sorry, Jerusalem, all Judea and, and Samaria. He remembered that. Uh huh. And he decided to go down to Samaria and preach Jesus. Not himself. Not himself. If the church, we as a body of Christ, choose to be witnesses as of today, we can change this nation. All you have to do, just be a light. Light attracts everything. That, that's it. Light attracts. Sit, sit. Let me ask you, brothers and sisters. Can you just be nice? Is it such a foreign thing for a Christian to just be nice to everybody? The Bible said Jesus was anointed with the oil of gladness above all his fellows. Can you be like Jesus? Just be nice. Can you keep a smile on your face? Let me share with you this, brothers and sisters. We have to be careful. Many of us are trapped because of what happened to us in our past. And we don't even recognize it. Our past show up on our faces. And we don't even realize that. Amen. And instead of being a light to people, we become despicable to people. Are you with me, saints? We forget who we are. We allow our past to define us. Are you getting what I'm saying, saints? And I'm sharing with you again, brothers and sisters. If you are ineffective at work as a Christian, go and apologize to these people. Tell them, look, I'm sorry. I know I didn't smile and I, I, you know, I lose my mind. I lose my composure over the water fountain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. It is time. It is time for that. It's time to clean out the heart. So Jesus can take residence in a heart. Are you with me, saints? It is time to go back and repent and say, look, I'm sorry. Amen. I'm sorry I messed up. Glory be to God. I gossiped. Amen. I gossiped about you and I'm the reason why the office is so divided. Because of me and my uppity up mentality. Amen. I forgot the Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hands of God. And he will exalt you in due season. I forgot that. I should be light in here, not darkness. I shouldn't be the one putting division in here. I should be the one bringing everybody together. Excuse me, I'm working on my endeavoring to keep the bond of unity. Now that is true Christianity. Then when you lay hands at work, folks will get healed and Jesus will be magnified. The world is coming to an end and it's time we get our business straight. Amen. It's time we put our stuff together. It's, ta it's time that we become, we start becoming effective for the Lord. I'm not asking you to go out there every Saturday and knock on doors. If you want to bless God, I might even join you. All I'm asking you to do is be a witness. Be nice. Carry a smile. A smile says I'm confident. A smile says I know who I am. A smile says I know whose I am. A smile says I'm beyond intimidation, you know. <laughs> um, a smile says I'm walking in authority. A smile is disarming. It's a powerful thing. <laughs> Can I get some smiles out there? <laughs> hey, God, I give you praise. Hallelujah. Uh, relax those facial muscles. They've been too stiff. Amen. <laughs> oh, bl <laughs> blessed be the name of the Lord. Just be nice. Just be nice. You know what's expected of you? Do it. Let me say that again. You know what's expected of you? Do it. Don't do it and expect people to, and expect people to, to agree with you. And if they don't agree with you, you call somebody and say, well, you know, they do. I, nobody call me and tell me nothing. I'm just saying what's on my heart. Amen. 
Let me, nobody, I, I don't gossip with church people. I don't do that. Nobody. Ask my wife. We don't do that. So if you hear me talking about something, you hear me, please listen. Don't, don't, if you know that's expected of you, you've been told what's expected of you and you don't do it and you expect to get benefits, that's devilish. Don't go around talking and saying, well, they do this, they do that. They, who gives a rip what you think? You know the law. You know the order of the house. It's time we stop playing these games. And grow up. Grow up. <laughs> that is why the church is so. The, the, the church is giving up grounds to the devil. We are retreating. Why? We are still playing games with God. And God's word. God has never bent this law for anybody. He's never bent his word for anybody. He, because the Bible says in, in Proverbs Psalms 138 verse 2. Jesus said, I have magnified my word above my name. Correction. I have magnified my word above all my names. Psalms 138 verse 2, not 132. I have magnified this part B, the last part. He said, for I have magnified above. God magnified this right here is above Jehovah Jireh. This is above Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha, Sintidu, Makadesh, El Elyon, El Rohai. Many, many of us Christians, we haven't embraced that truth. I know, because if we did, we would take the seeds in that word and sow it in our hearts. And in a year or two, we would evolve into different individuals. The emphasis in Christendom has lost on this right here. The word of God. That's what Philip preached. The word of God. Jesus, he preached Jesus. John chapter 14 verse 1. one sorry, John 1, 1 tells us. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with. God. And the word. God. The word. The word. Oh, the emphasis that should, we read all kind of books. We read all, and excuse me, I'm going to read, I do read, but I spend sufficient time in this right here. And what I read, if it doesn't support that, I dump it. What I read, if it doesn't support the Bible, I throw it away. But I think the church doesn't have, the, we have lost. <laughs> don't you forget the imagery I gave you of the two, don't forget the two images I gave you of the two portions of land. A desolate land. And a land that's well watered, looking pretty green. The only difference is one land received the seed. It took root, germinated, grew up and bring forth trees. The other land didn't. And that's what most of us Christians are in our hearts. We feel dry and parched. Always looking for something out there to fill this in. It is not out there. It is in here. That's where the power and the action is in here. You take the source seed of God's word. You start to memorize. You know what? I still walk around with my cell phone going off at 9. Uh, 9 in the morning, 12, noon, 3, and 6. It still goes off so I can memorize my scripture. Still, so I can memorize the first phrase in my scripture. Every scripture, every week I have a different scripture. Why? It's because of what the Bible says. I was going to share a scripture I read this week with you, but let's move on. See, I... Anyhow, since just, just, just work with me, amen. So the Bible tells us we are to be witnesses, amen. Praise the Lord. Witnesses for Jesus wherever we go. Amen. As I said, notice the specificity with which the concept of witnessing is communicated in the Bible. He said, You shall be witnesses. He did not say go witnessing. There is room for that, amen. There is room for that. We are to be a light in darkness. A city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Mm? A candle on a lampstand. That, uh, that's what being a witness means. Th that's what being a witness. People get attracted to witnesses. Mm? Because they just show up. And they change the environment. You can feel it from them. Hmm? Have you ever met somebody in whom Christ is formed? I've met some people and I went to them and whispered unto them, dude, you're really saved. 
<laughs> Bro, you're really saved. <laughs> just, just you, somebody in whom Christ is formed. And they don't have to be in charge, but everybody knows they are in charge. <laughs> oh, glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil put off your light sins. Amen. Don't, let's not lose our testimony. We've been doing that too many times. Hmm? Too many times. Now is the time to keep shining. Amen. Let hope radiate from you. Everywhere you go, let hope radiate. Keep that smile. Keep that smile. Amen. Keep that smile and disarm the devil. Amen. Now, where did he went to? Can you go back to our text? Acts chapter 8 verse 6, I think. On verse 5. Verse 5. Where did he went to? He went to Samaria. Now, now, now the city of Samaria. I mean, who are the Samaritans? Let me read this to you. It was, Samaria was an ancient city. It was the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel. The northern kingdom of Israel had ten tribes. The southern kingdom had, how many tribes? Two tribes. Amen. You know Solomon's son did that. Amen. Solomon's son, because of, because he did not, Take the wisdom of his father's counselors. Amen. He did not use and embrace that wisdom. And so he lost 10 tribes. A long, long time ago, a good pastor said to me, he said, he said, son, you think you are the pastor of the church? He said, you think you're in control? <laughs> and he was looking at me <laughs> and he said, if you think you are, you'll be shocked and surprised to know who is when 25 or 75 percent of the people leaves the church yeah he said that to me i it's it's uh, still i had a friend right here in in alabama and i'm saying this with all respect thriving church services 800 to a thousand and he felt large and in charge he felt what large and in charge he forget his position was to serve he brought a member of parliament and started talking about politics. He wasn't preaching Jesus. He brought politics on the pulpit. The next Sunday, 50% of the people left. He didn't, he didn't get, he, he didn't catch the sign. He came back the next Sunday of a full presentation on politics. The next Sunday, then another 25% left. Today, about 50 people is in the church calling me, talking about what, what should I do? Go get a job. You did not preach Christ. Since we got to be. Let me move on. Let me just move on here. Can you tell somebody be nice? Yeah, just be nice. Just, <laughs> just be nice. When God blesses you with something, be very thankful. And stay Christian. Stay serving. Tell people the truth, but stay serving. Are you with me? Say, the real people with pure hearts will hear. Some people have the agenda. Don't worry about that. You know, we all got our agendas. And so who are the Samaritans? Hmm? Samarias. Now, now listen. After nearly a century and a half of idolatry and rebellion against God. The city of Samaria fell to the Assyrians on the Shalmaneser. And that's recorded in 2 Kings chapter 17 and 18. You could go read it there. Amen. Samaria's downfall marked the end of the northern kingdom. Shortly after capturing the city, listen to me, the Assyrians deported all the wealthy and middle class Jews from this area. Then they moved in a pagan population from afar. Can I say this right here? This is where the prison administration adopted the idea of removing inmates from areas with which they are familiar. Nothing is new under the sun. The Samaritans, the Assyrians came in. They took all the wealthy people to one place. And they brought in <laughs> a new set of people. To get them confused and discombobulated. And these people bred together. When they came together, their children were called Samaritans. Oh, the Jews hated them. Let me say that again. Can I back up? The Orthodox Jews. Not the Messianic Jews. I got to make the difference. Amen. And because they... They are Orthodox Jews who still at the who are still at the Wailing Wall, praying, 
for Jesus' return. Are you with me? The Orthodox Jews, all the Messianic Jews, they, they took the gospel and they ran with it. Well, some of you. Uh, <laughs> Amen. Now the pagans intermarried with the lowest classes of the remaining Jews in northern Israel. And from these people came the Samaritans. Samaria fell at the hands of the Assyrians 600 years before Philip went to evangelize that place. Generally speaking, the Jews of that day hated the Samaritans. They considered them compromising half-breeds who corrupted the worship of the true God. There was a deep-seated prejudice. And hatred, amounting almost to hatred, standing between the Jews and the Samaritans. And since yet, God had a plan for the Samaritans. <laughs> oh, glory be to Jesus. Unlike the Jews, God had a plan for the Samaritans. I tell you, God is a God of the underdog. <laughs> Let me tell you why God is that type of God. Because God knows there is a spiritual force, the devil. That's controlling people on the earth. And they are not even aware of it. Yeah. Just move. A, a whisperings from the devil. We just move with it. So the Bible says he went down to Samaria. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Uh, let, 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 me, let me move on. And he preached Christ to them. He preached whom? He preached Christ to them. What does it mean to preach Christ? Since that's a whole other sermon, I'll just touch it. Amen. And we'll continue the next time. Amen. And the reason we need to explore this question is because we saw what happened when Philip preached Christ. How many of you would love to see what Philip saw? To, to go out there and lay hands and hear demons living and shrieking. Since that's still possible. That is still what? Possible today. Now, I know many people think it is not possible. But until Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18 is taken out of the Bible. I Let me say that again. Until Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18 is taken out from the Bible. I still believe that we can lay hands and see people get healed. It's right here. Mark, Mark chapter 16, verse, verse 17 says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. Anybody in there believers? Let me say that again. I think I said that too fast, Mr. Howard. I, let me say that slow. Anybody in here are believers? Yeah. Well, if you are a believer, this is what the Bible says you can do. And, and listen to me. Do not let anybody, do not let any trend seminarian. Yeah, are you getting what I'm saying? Do not let any trend. I went to seminary for a couple of years and I'm telling you, my, the professor and I can do a lot of trouble. I left. Are you with me? Right here, it says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, Jesus is preaching. He said, in my name, they shall cast out devils. In my name, they shall speak with new tongues. Mm -hmm. Oh, there is, the devil has, or the devil has raised up Christians fighting against speaking in tongues. There is a war out there. Talking about all these, after the Bible was canonized, all of these, oh, okay. All of this, all of this cyst with the dying of the apostles, a lie fed by the them, fed to them by the devil. That is why, how many of you thank God for doctors? Because if it wasn't for doctors, all the Christians would die because we do not know to lay hands on ourselves. You, you don't have to say amen. That's all right. That, that's what I believe. That's, that's what I believe. The Bible says, if you believe, if you believe, can you go back to verse 18, please? Verse 17. In my name, they shall cast out devils. In my name, they shall speak with new tongues. Can you go to verse 18? In my name, they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. Lord God, I give you praise. They can put poison in food for you. When you bless that food, it neutralizes the poison. <laughs> oh God, I give you praise. Are you getting what I'm saying? It says, in my name, in Jesus' name, they shall lay hands on the sick. Now, if you can lay hands on the sick, sure enough, you can lay hands on yourself. <laughs> and they shall do what? Recover. Can somebody say joy in that city? Joy in that city. 
That's why the city was so joyful because they recovered. God is looking in these last COVID days. These last, what's the, what's the two other ones? Omicron and, and Delta virus. That, look, I, we, let's wear our mask. Amen. Let us do that. If you want to take the shot, take the shot. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you want, you, you know, you all talk about it out there. When, when we talk about it in church, you, 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 you stop breathing. But after COVID, when I saw what COVID did to my friends, I finally accepted the call to preach the Bible boldly. I said, I'm not going, I'm not going to disrespect anybody, but brother, I'm coming out like a blazing, a blazing gun. So, as I was saying, do what you have to do, but don't forget to grow from faith to faith. I get what I'm saying. Still take everything, but grow from faith to faith. Mm? Is that all right? For that matter, Elabra and I found out many of us who don't take the vaccine is because we're afraid of what's in it, not because we are faith. <laughs> afraid! <laughs> Anyhow, let me move on here before. <laughs> I think Minister Din just said to me my time is up please take time to meditate on the word and let it sink into your heart and soul and mind today knowing that the Christian who meditates on the word will be like a tree planted by the water bringing forth fruit in its season and prospering in all that he does but what if you aren't a Christian today what if you don't know if you're bound for heaven as a forgiven child of God? If that's you, then let's take care of it right now if you're ready. Do you believe that Jesus died for your sins? Are you ready to be forgiven of your sins and washed clean and made new? Are you ready to begin your new life in Christ? Then turn to God right now and say, Lord, I love you. I need you. I repent of my sins. Lord, please forgive me and wash me clean. I receive your forgiveness right now as I put my faith in Jesus as my Savior. God, please lead me and teach me and show me how to live from now on. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And if you're looking for a good church family, you'll be welcomed with open arms at Imitators of God Ministries, Colossal Vivacious Church in Tallahassee, located at 4750 Capital Circle Southeast near Tram Road. Sunday school begins for all ages at 10 a.m. and the morning service begins at 11. And the Wednesday evening service begins at 7. This is a life-giving, multicultural, multi-generational church where people of all races, backgrounds, and walks of life come together to worship, to be inspired in their love for God, to develop relationships, and to be empowered to live out God's purpose for their lives. Find more information on their website, imitatorsofgodministries.com or call the church 850-408-8496.